right back with the game. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to another day of Star Letter Season 6, day number 17 if I'm correct. And we have got ourselves 6 games to look forward to, that's right, a day full of Dota 2. Now after this match we will have a, a bit of a break, but uh, then there's gonna be 5 matches after that. So don't worry, we got you covered. Uh, we are gonna see 4FC versus Rock's Kiss as the first game. Uh, I'll just go over the rest of the games real quickly before I do the rest. It's 4FC versus Virtus Pro after this one. Alliance vs Empire, Empire IC Cup, DD vs Power Rangers, and DD vs KPS, the last two games of the day. And of course for today we have got a three-man squad providing you with all the coverage that you want to have. We have got K-Pop Tosis, the one that you won't see, but you'll see what he does. He'll provide you with all the stats for today, and of course my co-cast, the, the one that you will hear, is Kanaz for today. Welcome back. Glad to be back. Yeah, and these teams have, um, well... I actually, I don't think my intro was that long. Did they just, they just drafted really fast. Yeah, they're drafting pretty quickly. You saw like one second of reserve time there used by rocks, but most of the picks and bans thus far, they haven't even really been using the regular time for the picks. So just going quickly through the draft as per kind of usual lately. A lot of teams, I guess like the drafts have become sort of boring standard, even in the first Band and pick phases. We see almost always the same bands like Steeler, Wisp, Batrider. Maybe one other that kind of changes, and then these are what we. Some of these heroes being picked are somewhat unusual, but rocks do still favor the Nyx Assassin, even if a lot of teams don't anymore. Yeah, we have the Lone Druid as one of the bands as well, as a bit of a targeted band against Curly, as he likes to play that really a lot, but. Uh, yeah, that is a Kunkka. So that is Strangby's, one of the, his most played carries the Kunkka for 4FC. They pick up a Visage with that as well. Now we've seen them run the Kunkka in the safe lane tri lane. So I'm kind of curious to see how they're gonna run this as they will be up against a Gyrocopter coming off from rocks, a Nyx Assassin as a support most likely and a Nature's Prophet already there as well. So we're gonna have still a mid hero picked up probably and then a secondary support slash jungle hero if they choose to go for that but we already see that 4FC is expecting a secondary support and they started with the ban on the keeper of the light as for 4FC we need two solo lanes so or at least at least the off lane perhaps depending on what they do with their kunkka still a solo mid or a carry and the um well, rocks go with the ones that they know for sure that is still needed it is the off lane it is a dark seer that is banned yeah uh 4FC we saw them run kunkka the other day and they used it in their tri lane with the shadow demon uh, so I'm kind of expecting to see that again. It's a very powerful trialing with these three heroes. And they ran it aggressive last time. They could certainly do it this time as well. Uh, so probably looking for two solos for them. So Rock's banning out at least Darkseer to start things off. is you know It's straightforward. Darkseer is a very powerful hero. And he's also very good with Kunkka. Uh, if you can vacuum them into like Torrent and then Boat, it's a lot of magic damage very quickly. For sure. And the amount of burst that it also comes up with the Visage then to finish everybody off that is still on uh, relative low HP. And then you've got yourself some uh, some, some very high burst damage. As we have a Tinker and a Puck getting banned out. And Dying Rockstar team. for assuming that Kunkka is not going to be mid. And maybe also already banning out a counter to the mid that they want to pick up. As there is a lot of heroes that Solo could still pick up. We know that Solo plays the uh, Storm Spirit quite often. Not, on, not always to a uh, very good avail and that's mostly due to his um well overextension powers i call them he really likes to dive really far and some heroes allow that some heroes don't sometimes situation of the game just um you know doesn't allow it even though solo will Ten still think remaining. it is allowed but uh, queen of pain still in the pool wow. as well magnus in the pool anyway no no, no magnus in the pool anymore as he gets banned out together with a tinker by 4fc 
yeah. Uh, so taking out just all the kinds of heroes here, Storm Spirit, it's certainly a pick they could go here for Rox. Uh, it's also possible they could just run Nyx Assassin as uh, a mid lane hero if they really wanted to. We've seen Rox do it from time to time. There's one of the teams that still will. It feels like there's a, uh, some teams that have kind of moved past that point where they'll never run Nyx Assassin in the mid lane. Uh, but he's still a very powerful ganker, and you can run him pretty easily in the mid lane. He doesn't lose to a lot of the common picks, like Magnus, uh, but of course he's banned out. Uh, Queen of Pain still in the pool is, a, is an option for either one of these Five teams to pick up. Remaining. We'll see if Rox end up banning it out. Uh, we've seen Templar Assassin kind of make a resurgence lately. Uh, they could certainly go for something like that. Forcey maybe a little bit less likely, since it looks like they're going kind of more team fighty with Gunka pickups. Uh, but still wait and see what Rock's going to ban out with their last pick before we uh, get to see the picks here. Yeah, and they're actually taking a bit into their bonus time for it. It ends up being the Queen of Pain, so that makes me think that Rox is aiming to get that Storm Spirit for solo. But let's see if 4FC will allow them to have that as, well, we already discussed it, Kunka probably will be on a tri lane, be that safe lane or suicide lane. We don't know yet, but uh, wow. That is a Treant Protector. I'm thinking offlane Treant and then maybe even safe lane and have that Kunk on an aggressive tri lane so that he can dive really far. Yeah, both of those are very possible. We've seen lots of the uh, solo side lane Treant Protectors played. Uh, it's definitely powerful. We've seen its effect on games sort of more and more lately ever since DD started picking it up in the West Qualifiers. Uh, we'll see what they end up running with it, but I think looking at it for the side lane solo is probably the best idea minute. right now. Yeah, I mean, terrain protector is good for 4FC to have that potential to just, you know, stay alive longer, obviously. But if Rox goes for that Storm Spirit that I'm still right. expecting, which for now is going to be a Clockwork, actually. But we do know that uh, Rox loves to play Clockwork as support. Yol is the one that does that. So one mid hero still to be picked up, but if they do go for a hero that goes like very aggressive in, or you know, in theory, any hero that solo plays, he'll probably will want to be trying to to do that those kind of things. Trian Protector is very punishable for, to that behavior, and one living armor can just completely turn the turn the fight around. And Solo is one of those players that will go will go just in too deep a bit, and then will have to regret it later on. But we'll see what hero they're picking up last. As the Shadow Fiend will be the 4FC solo mid most likely. Even though, I mean, in theory, Kunka could go mid and then Shadow Fiend on the safe lane. Seconds. It's all Ten still possible. A lot of versatility for 4FC. Yeah, those heroes Five are very swappable mid. in their laning positions. Either one could end up mid and, and the other will likely be in the tri lane. Which does leave the tree and protector the only hero really on the team that's likely to go into a solo side lane role. Oh, which is what we figured. Uh, I'm kind of favoring Shadow Fiend probably in the mid lane. He doesn't have maybe as good a synergy with Shadow Demon like the way Kunkka would, so that just makes their tri lane a little bit more powerful, especially if they want to run it aggressively. Uh, if you go to Shadow Fiend tri lane, you're going to almost certainly want to run it as a defensive tri lane. Mm -hmm. And as a result, you're kind of just trying to bet against Gyrocopter not farming as well as you, because Gyrocopter is a very powerful carry in the mid game. Uh, at least as powerful, probably more so than Shadow Fiend. So they're gonna have to kind of then play a, a little bit different style than Forfsy usually think. Uh, I play, I think. Yeah, Rocks, they're the team that actually used most of their bonus time. They're still thinking about this last pickup. Or maybe they already know what they want Ten to have and just are discussing how they will up be up against Forfsy. Uh, and oh my god, they pick up a Venomancer. And how is how are they gonna run this? We see actually Solo picking up the Venomancer. Now you have to realize that Venomancer's poison actually ticks off the living armor from the nature uh, from the tree protector, so that you know is is a bit of a semi counter there. But will this be a Venomancer Solo mid for rocks? Uh, it's hard. It's really. It feels unlikely to me. They could do it. Uh, we've certainly seen it before. Usually as a pick up against the TA. First see Ruxus have made sure twice before. And they sit at 1-1. One, one. Alright, so they're even in matches, which I think some people may not have thought of. I think some people have to underestimate 4FC. Uh, because they're not in a lot of the really, really big tournaments. But in Starlighter, they usually play pretty well. They definitely go at least about even with yeah. the other teams. And they, they have played in Starlighter in, in multiple seasons, never have been dropped down. And for now, they are actually sitting at the fifth spot right now for 
Starletter. They have played five games and only dropped one up against Empire Sunday, I believe. So they're still doing really well. They're actually um, just a, they've made they have lost as many games as, for example, Virtus Pro, as Mao Sports, as Alliance. Though they only have five games played, it does show that they are indeed not a team to really underestimate. And they, they are just a, a very strong team in terms of their coordination. Uh, they, for example, beat DD, a team that is highly valued by uh, a lot of the public lately, of course, because of their performance in uh, the Western qualifiers of the international. But 4FC were able to just shut them down. And was, by the way, a very a very entertaining match. Sorry if I spoiled the results and you wanted to watch the replay, but you should see it anyway. Anyway, let's see who's playing what. So we are gonna see Solo playing the Venomans of this game. He did pick up a ward, so Solo, unlike other games, is playing a support. As you can now vote who you are expecting to win. If it's gonna be Rocks, type vote exclamation mark vote Rocks. If you wanna if you wanna see uh, or, or if you think that 4FC wins, type exclamation mark vote 4FC. We're gonna see Van Score, who is a fan of a Dutch movie, by the way. That is what his capital letters and Maskanje means. He'll play the clockwork for this game in the mid lane it looks like we are going to see BZZ's perfect on the Nyx Assassin as you already pointed out that would be a possibility Dread seems to be on a solo lane on the gyrocopter and we are just going to jump ourselves to the smoked up solo and van score let's see if they can get a kill up on here on Blumsberg the cogs will be there with that invis rune no escape for Blumberg the gale will hit as well there will be an impale if needed and that is a living armor trying to help out but it's not going to be enough the first blood goes to solo on his venomancer and a very secure pickup with of course help of that invis rune and by the way yol the last one on rock's kiss is playing on the off lane on the nature prophet yep and for c we're gonna have krilly he's gonna be playing the tree pro uh, tree protector up in his top lane solo mid's gonna be blomberg handling the shit off into his soldiers just go down to that first blood and then their offensive trialing will be iconoclast on the Shadow Demon, String B playing the Kunkka, and Boomski on the Visage. Yeah, and this aggressive try line looks to be very dangerous. One disruption, and if Shadow Demon, ma Shadow Demon managed to get level 2, you've also got that Soul Catcher just to make all the bursts that 4FC already has extra bursty. And for example, like the defensive side of Roxke's lineup is not really there. They have got those cogs, but Clockwork is actually counterboarding right now, and the cogs are all they have, because a Venomancer can't really save you. He can go counter-aggressive, for sure, but he can't really save a target from getting killed off um, if you are going to get disrupted. There's really nothing that, that can save you. Yeah, and uh, that gink in the mid lane we didn't really talk about it too much, but that Invisor made it basically completely possible. Smoke is okay at level 1, but they don't actually have a stun on either of the heroes that were smoked up. Yeah. They have that slow on Venomancer, but the Invis allowed Clockwork to just walk up to him and cog him. And at that point, Shopping just says, like, well, I'm super dead. So he tried to deal damage to BZ to maybe make his matchup a little bit easier. So definitely a good first blood coming out from Rox, and people in chat are saying that BZZ is now playing their solo role, and Solo is playing support. They swapped roles around a little bit, I guess, and yeah. I guess that leaves a uh, dread on carry. Yeah, it actually uh, Yul used to be the secondary support, the four role, if you will. So he swapped with Dread, and then uh, Dread swapped with BZZ, and then BZZ no. swapped with Solo, something like that. But uh, yeah, a bit of different roles coming out of Rox. They have a decent result in Starlighter though, they have played 8 games so far with a 4 on 4 record, so 4 wins, 4 losses, as the Gale hits up on Boomski, the disruption is gonna be there to stop the Clocker from chasing it down, but with that slow there, oh the Grave, that helps out a lot, and Dread with the Rock Rush should still be able to pick up the kill with Yul taking the last hit, so taking the credit there, he TP'd in, of course, that is something that you can always do if you have that Nature's Prophet on the map, and he'll TP back towards the top lane to make sure that really won't have a too easy time on that top lane but that's a second kill going the way of rocks and the aggressive trial in a 4fc now not able to do that much anymore oh and the rocks kids knows that they smoke up solo and vance yeah. going mid once more rocks actually have a fantastic anti-tree lineup uh, they have th what three four heroes that all remove tree armor quickly and Blobber getting killed, we'll talk about yeah. it after. The DD rune helping out, the Gale also of course being there, there goes the living armor, but as you said, I mean, yeah, it's just not gonna work. BZZ yep. gets the kill and is now actually I think two levels ahead, he just turned level 5, while Blomberg is still sitting at level 3, almost level 4, but still that's a big difference because that Nyx Assassin at level 6 will surely be a menace to everybody of 4FC. 
Yeah, so, uh, like I said, if everyone except BZZ is really great at removing living armor charges. We have Clockwork, he can auto attack, and even the uh, battery assault hits multiple times. And True Protector is 60% in the last 25 games in this last month. That's a lot of games played for Tree Protector, who was basically completely ignored. They, he got traded a little bit after his uh, change to Living Armor, where they made it global and kind of really powerful. But certainly an upswing in popularity, and it's not looking good for him this game thus far. No, and it's not looking good for Blumberger either, because Vanscore managed to get himself another invisibility rune. And he's just waiting for Blumberg to just walk a bit forward so that he can actually get a... Cogs in. This time no Gale though, so this time they have to do it without it, but maybe we'll have, uh, well, we'll of course have a bit more damage from, from BZZ there. Look at how careful Blumberg is though. He didn't have a ward for, actually, that sentry ward might have just scouted it out, and it looks like it did. And then score realizing that he wasn't going to get anything, backs off. In the meantime, on the top lane, Yol taking a lot of damage from Krilly. The living seed is not going to be enough though. Krilly doesn't get the kill. And that's the back off. By the way, Krilly is doing really well on the last hit. He is 26 to 4. He's highest last hitter on the map. Even more than the safe lane Gyro and the aggressive trial lane Kunkra, who are sitting at 18 from 19 to 7 right now and on 14 to 3 for the Gyro. Yeah, it, that's not super surprising because these two are having their farm contested by the other. Was we have a Treant Protector up in the top lane against Nature's Prophet, and Tree just hits so hard. He has 101 damage right now with no stats at all in his inventory. So it's kind of hard for Nature's Prophet to last him. Usually he relies on Treant sort of hitting out similar times and like harassing people back, but Krilly doesn't really care about that. He's a big old tree man, he's just gonna punch these creeps to death. Yeah, rightfully so. And 71% favor Roxkiss in this matchup. As the results come out from the poll earlier on, 4FC, 29%. Well, we'll see if they can prove the majority wrong. Of course, that is going to be their goal. But Rock's already looking solid for this game. It's 3-0 and in terms of kills. And we have got Solo just scouting out where Blomberg went. Uh, we do have the level 6 up for the Nyx Assassin. And this is a fairly fast level 6, of course, because of those kills. And normally around this time, you'd expect maybe your aggressive trial. Oh, wait a second. Disruption is going to be there. Here comes the cops. to try and prevent something. Torrent will so happen. Iconoclast will actually go down. The Gale misses. So Solo cannot chase that. Or Boomski, he gets locked in. He goes down. Venomancer with the last hit. Tries to throw the soul assumption, Haze, Drune, BZZ, charging forth, can't find strength be anymore, so he retreats, but that is all of a sudden five heroes of rocks on this bottom lane, so if this tower doesn't go down, I don't know what will. And strength be, he can only throw out a tour and trying to delay it a bit, but yeah, it's looking grim for 4FC at the moment. Yeah, their draft just, I don't not think we're working out the way they wanted it to. They sent Shadow Fate to the mid lane, he's highly gankable, he ends up getting picked off at level 1, and now he's just kind of almost out of the game at this point. He's going to need a lot of farm before he can do much of anything. And rocks just have a very good counter tree lineup, so even that surprise tree pick really didn't do too much. Oh my god, they managed to defend the tower with the living armor. Living armor too strong. Yep, and now they will be able to heal up this tower again, and that will be the main job for Curly for the next couple of minutes. Ma just make sure that it's not going to get backdoored or something like that. As, uh, whoa, Blumberg, gonna get that Vendetta hit, one more hit needed from BZZ, and just proper TPing in just to make sure that they get the kill. There we go, Yul picks it up, Curly TP is in too slow. Gonna go for a living seed up on Yul, there's nobody else here though, and Curly has to be careful because BZZ is already drinking a bit of his bottle again. Has got one mana burn left here as well, and there's no support for Curly. So this is kind of dangerous for him, and he realizes that as well as a DD rune gets picked up by Nyx Assassin, and in the meantime, on the bottom lane, the first skill for 4FC in the books, it is the Gyrocopter that actually ends up dropping there. Yeah, and that's an important kill for them to get. Gyrocopter needs to die in this trial lane. They have to slow him down a lot, because they know their Shadow Fiend isn't really farming. It's going to take a long time for him to actually get anything. So trying to do their best to just shut down uh, Gyrocopter for at least a little while will do some work for 4FC at this point. And try and keep them back in it. Yeah, and one thing that I'm kind of missing from the lineup from 4FC is sentry wards. Because right now you'd expect that Nyx Assassin to be walking around the map, and even though you don't have to have them like planted already, there's also none in the inventories of these supports or of Strangby or of, or in anyone actually. So this Nyx Assassin can just do whatever he wants. The moment that Blumberg says missing from the mid lane, as for now BZ is of course still sitting comfortably farming in that mid lane. 
There will be nothing to... Whoa, Strang B! There is no TP for him, and the Venomancer gets the kill. Cogs stopping that TP from happening. Nicely done. But yeah, the moment that he says missing, there's not going to be words in time before that Venom uh, before that uh, Nix Assassin is actually on this bottom lane to try and kill some of the supports. Oh, Blomberg goes down here as well. The Sprout was there. And the 4 of C, they're just getting wiped right now. Maybe they can get BZZ though. The Overgrowth is there. Living Seed as well. Here comes the Spike Carapace trying to provide BZ with an escape route. Shadow Poison gonna try to help out. The Soul Assumption will do the job. And that is Boomski with the second kill of the game also for him. So he's had two kills. Oh, yeah, both kills so far actually. As the meantime, Rock's trying to once again try to lock on the uh, tier 1 tower. Yeah, so... The real problem with getting Sentry Awards is if you look at Matrim's gold, he now has 300 and only Magic Stick. Uh, before getting that kill, <laughs> he had less than 100 gold and only Magic Stick. And if we check the uh, Courier now, he does have Sentry Awards picked up. So it was just a matter of him needing to be able to get any gold whatsoever. He was sitting at like 300 net worth, which is not ideal. And uh, as a result, there weren't really Sentry Awards placed, even if they did want them. Yeah, and that's of course the result of not having that aggressive trend lane working out. Because normally you'd get that, you get that um, that extra gold from stacking and pooling on the uh, on the safe lane, for example. And you'd expect to get some kills on an aggressive trial lane, and that I mean they got one kill, but they did lose also Strangby in the end for it, and and they just don't have that much, as you pointed out. As rocks, I mean you'd expect from a game this early on when there's a train protector on the team that the team that has a trainer protector won't really die that often purely because of that living armor being incredibly powerful even it's already at level four actually and really almost have his mechanism complete and that will be a very early mechanism for 4 fc and maybe allow them to maybe be a bit more aggressive and start fighting a bit more since they also have that boat we'll see what they do with that but yeah the, this it's still eight for two and and rocks kiss they are still controlling the the playing ground as it is yeah, they're going to have to be pretty pro uh, proactive here with Krilly if they want to try and uh, get something done here. Tree, he's going to have an early mech and he'll be great for trying to keep his teammates alive in these fights. The problem is that they need to buy time for Blomberg on the Shadow Fiend to really get anything up. They could sort of rely on Kuko with his spells to do some damage in fights, but Blomberg really needs items before he's going to be able to do too much. You can sort of raise people, but he's very squishy he's and vulnerable to getting killed if he tries to group up. So I'm kind of expecting to see some four-man pushing coming out from Forest in the near future. And uh, maybe, th hopefully they'll be able to get it going pretty well for them. They're going to have to be somewhat worried about BZZ and the Nyx Assassin just catching someone out in the back of the fights to start it off. And then they're oh. not coming back from it. Krilly is going to dive this, but a TP comes in from BZZ. Maybe able to do something here. The mana burn is there, but they are not chasing that. Even though the Vendetta is up for BZZ, it's, it, I mean, they know they would be ch chasing a tree and that's not really something that you can easily kill with the amount of burst damage that BZ has. And one thing that I want to just point out, I mean, the strength of having that tree. The tier 1 tower bottom that was almost dead at some point, back to full HP. Yeah, it was down below 100. Yeah. <laughs> now it's up to like 1200. And that it was down below 100 while it was being attacked, and they couldn't just take it down. Tree armor's pretty strong. Y'all in trouble in top lane. Oh, a lot of trouble. One more hit needed. 4 HP is where he's sitting at, and there is no way that Krilly can eat a tree, because he doesn't have tango. So that is an escaping hole that could have been a kill if he had some tangos or anything like that, but nope. No yeah, or even, un no, yeah, no even mana enough mana for, for overgrowth, and he'd be able to do it, and he yeah. just didn't have it. Fortunately for, unfortunately for him, but fortunately for Yol, of course, who was able to get away. He has got that Hand of Midas, so he is getting ahead in terms of net worth as well as in terms of experience. As far as experience go, we have got 2k, over 2k in favor of Rock's Kiss. There's six kills difference. The 2k is not that much compared to the difference on kills, so... Uh, still plenty of possibility for 4 of C to get back into this game. The gold graph looking 3k in favor of... of, of Rocks as we have got a cooldown coming down. Strangby taking a lot of damage there, but the grave chill on dread will make sure that nobody do oh, nobody chases. I was gonna say, but the gale hits on Strangby. He tries to do what he can. Throws a boat and a tour and still alive for now. That boat buff might be help out for him. And it is indeed Vanscore that goes down. Strangby will in the end go down as well. Sprout up on iconoclast, but he'll just continue casting anyway. Disrupts the vendetta 
BZZ and allows maybe the rest to get away. Boomski, look at him sitting there on very low HP. Can't, HP. can't do anything but command his birds, but we'll be able to get out in the end. It's a, it's a way better situation than, than they, it started out to be. I mean, yeah, they lose their Kunkka, but they also get a kill in return, and it could have been much, much worse for them. Yeah, it's actually really hard to kill 4C in these fights, so once the boat flies through from Kunkka as well as the living armor, it makes one person very, very resilient to getting killed. The 50% armor redu or damage reduction and then the additional uh, damage reduction from living armor. Yeah. So, <laughs> Kunga just survived for a long time. Clockwork trapped him in cars, like, yeah, I got this, he's low on HP. And then he couldn't do any damage at all, and he's like, oh no. Eventually, uh, Stringby did go down just because his stuff started wearing off and he was still trapped in cogs, but not until after Vanscore lost his life. And that's some experience that goes the way of 4FC. Yeah, and they desperately need that. And oh my god, BZZ having a blink dagger at 15 minutes. This shouts for a very aggressive Nyx Assassin, and even though he has been involved in four kills, we haven't seen him be that aggressive. I was, I'm kind of thinking like, he doesn't go out by himself that much, he normally has his team around there, which is of course understandable, because otherwise you might not be able to burn through the living armor of the Traian Protector. But it's still not as aggressive as you might be expecting him to be from that solo mid roll. But sentry is all around for Boomski actually. Wow. Imagine that. Blomberg had a very tough start. He died four times, and he is still around average. Oh, but he might not be soon, though. Though that sentry ward helping out, knowing him, knowing, oh, him knowing where BZZ was at with that invis rune of his. He's actually sitting at like half average, according to that. Uh, oh, did I actually that, miss see that? Yeah, oh, it I was missed like, all that. <laughs> damn it. I was gonna say, like, that's normally surprising. Normally, 416, he's sitting at 178 less, so he's at 255. That's a much lower gold per minute, so he's not really having a great time thus far. But he's catching back up, and he was way out of it at one point, uh, just getting game. Like, he's like three deaths now, four deaths, oh four. four. So, on, yeah. On the bright side, I guess. I mean, survive. yeah. On the bright side, for Rockskiss, they've got nine kills, and four of those are on Lumberg. That means that Lumberg is the one that is shut down most. And it means that they still have, of course, the Kunka, who's only died twice, but also has got two assists. And the Trian Protector, who hasn't died yet. Just, they do fairly okay-ish. I'm not gonna say that they're doing amazingly well, as of course that top bottom lane isn't really, wasn't really working out for, for FC, but it could have gone worse. And we actually see the change trendy top went top to try and get some farm there, as we see Krilly rotating bottom with his mechanism now to try and help out here on this top lane. And even with the rocket barrage, look at that tanky tree, he just wants to go in on that, and you disconnected from the game. Yeah, my, okay. my Dota crashed, I don't okay. know what happened. <laughs> well, that's okay. So far, nothing really that you miss, at least no action, even though it looks like 4 of C wants to try and make something happen with that mechanism of theirs. But Radiance rocks, they realize that, so they don't continue going. We have got Vanscore with that hook ready, so might be looking for something. Might be looking for Iconoclast, actually, who's standing still right there. But nope, it's just a bait. Just a bait for now. As we have the gold graph giver, of course, in rocks 3k without any towers going down. Six right. minutes faster. This time I read it properly. Curly's mechanism is six minutes faster than the average on Trey and Protector. And of, of course, part of that is because he was solo farming, and normally Treyons are considered a bit of supports, jungling, uh, jungling, roaming supports, as we know that, for example, Goblek loves to do that a lot. So it helped for him a lot that he was able to get his uh, farm on the lane just for himself. But it's still a very fast mechanism, and it just allows for FC to be able to fight a lot more. And as you already pointed out earlier, they have so much damage reducing abilities. That a fight that starts out good for rocks can be easily turned around Radiance by just a boat, even if it misses. The rum is still there. Yeah, it definitely. They just have so much damage reduction that they could just last in fights. And usually, if you can just survive fights long enough to de use your spells, you're coming out pretty okay. So we'll see if 4C are going to make something happen. They're still trying to buy time, I think, for Blomberg. And they're defending their towers using this tree very effectively for mm -hmm. that. Blumberg might it's not have that much time left though. <laughs> Look at mid, here comes the blinking and the impale and the call down and the double damage rune and the hits and a kill. BZZ picks it up, Strangby comes in, the TPs are there, they still want to fight with or without Blumberg, but the Torn misses and the Sprout makes sure that nobody can chase that even though Dread tries to do what he can. He actually is going to get hit by a boat if he's not careful, doesn't get hit. 
And that is a blink in. RP Boomski, careful. One more hit. BZZ gets another kill. In the meantime, Shadow Demon goes down on the bottom lane. Rocks. Just. We have more kills on the bottom lane, actually, and that's gonna be the trail as well. Everybody TP'd middle, leaving the supports here on this bottom lane, and they end up going down. In the end, the only one that survived is Strangby, the Kunka that went middle. And they do get still the clockwork out of that, but that was not a fight that 4FC was hoping for. They were hoping for a team fight, not a split up counter ganking thing. And that was also the first tower that goes down. Yeah, they lose four heroes, they get a support clockwork in exchange, and they lose their tier one tower that they held on to for so long in the bottom lane. So they lose that little bit of map control too, and tier two, it's close to dead. They have 10 seconds till tree is back up. They probably need to finish the tower if they want it to go down. Yeah, we do have those wards still trying to. The wards though, they might be able to. There comes the living armor. Should be back up again in time. For before the next push comes for uh, from rocks. Well, look at that spike in experience gained. Of course, that's four kills across the map with not five people taking the experience of all the kills. So they they split the experience up as well, which actually is kind of nice. Blink in impale Blumberg, just getting some harassment going. Curly TPing in just in case, and also the rest of four FC coming in. I think it's time for some five man Dota coming up from four FC. They need to do something. Yeah, they're change. falling further and further behind, and they need to get something done here, or they're just going to sort of slip out of the game. They're not farming, really. Their items aren't coming up in the near future for really anyone. Strengby has a Vanguard, which is very kind of hedging towards needing to survive for till later and later in the game. But right now, they don't have anything to bet on late game. Blomberg doesn't have any money. We see that uh, BKB is finished now on Gyrocopter. So he's getting pretty big at this point to already have his BKB done, and he was in the tri lane that had an aggressive try and contesting his farm. So he wasn't really getting last hits, but he's caught up from that. Yeah, everybody at 4FC rotating bottom. Maybe they can take the, down a tower or something. Even if they change it with a tier 1 at this moment, it wouldn't be a bad thing for them to do because they need that score. They need those core items up before they can actually start fighting properly. and. That is exactly what they're going to do. They might trade it for two tier 1s though, in which case that's not going to be ideal at all. Tier 1 tower mid is getting pressured and tier 1 top getting pressured as well. But they do get a tier 1 bottom in return for that. And uh, they are going to defend their tier 1 middle as well. TPs are going to come in. The cogs are there. The gale already misses as another TP gets cancelled. And Blumberg the only one here now instead of uh, multiple people. They are coming in though, you see them, they want to go in from behind. The drawing on the minimap actually comes out from BZZ, who realizes that 4FC might try to go for a wraparound gank, but no such thing. 4FC is hiding behind their tower. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Yeah, they're keeping the tower up though, the living armor is going to try and heal it back up, get rid of as much damage on it as possible, because it doesn't look like rocks are giving up at the moment, but in the meantime, top tier 2. Yeah, yo, just continue pressuring. He's got 1900 gold, by the way. His trails will be able to finish up the tower, but he looks to be a goner. That is a nice skill going the way of Strength being extra gold for him. Trading a tier 2 for it and a tier 1 mid. Not ideal, but they they don't really have a choice at this point. Yeah, it's hard to say what they're going to get done here. If they keep moving around, they get a kill, but they give up two towers. They don't have a lot of towers to keep giving up for just to get uh, kills to try and get back in the game. They're down only eight kills, which isn't really the largest number, but it feels like they're pretty far behind at this point. And of course we see that they are behind by quite a few towers now. Yeah. So they have to make something happen, but I don't think that's it, is to just get one kill and trade two towers. Uh, one kill for two towers, not the idealist. And they don't even get a buyback for that from Nature's Prophet. He was able to buy back, but I mean, that just shows, like, rocks. they have the control of this game, and, and they are the ones who are really determining the pace of it, and the pace right now is a bit too far for 4FC to reply to everything that happens at once, and because of rocks being ahead there, as we are going to be seeing Visage maybe in some trouble, BZZ, going to try for that, but the Living Armor is there, he blinks himself away, but is it going to be in time that Amonic Purge is there? Can they get another Disable up on him? It doesn't look like it, the Disruption is not there in range. And that is even more split push power coming up from Yol as he picks up a Desolator. And of course with that, those towers will be dropping even faster than they already are. 
Yeah, we see uh, actually several big items coming up. Trim Protector gets his Blink Dagger now, so he'll be able to try and initiate with that Overgrowth. And actually, String V finished his Shadow Blade finally, so he'll be able to do a lot more damage in these fights as well with that uh, Boat Sword Tidebringer. Well, let's see if it's gonna be enough because they need to make something happen. And you just see, like, these two supports, Vanscore and Solo, they are supports in the end as, Ve as uh, Venomancer has managed to get himself a mechanism and Vanscore looking good with 1100 gold in his pocket. And they can sit on the wrong side of the river, as it were, with the two of them, with no carry to back it up. Well, now we have got a BZ coming in, but that's just the state of the game. It's, they are ahead. And they know it by quite far as uh, BZ now joins them in their siege. And also, we have got Dread coming in, who is looking to build a Helm of the Dominator by the looks of it. But they might be able to take down Yol instead. Oh, disruption. Sentry Ward just in time. And the Shadow Demon Matrem takes down the kill. And the BKB ready upon Blumberg. That also might be a big difference right now. But they have to make it, make it show, like in the next fight. They can't lose more fights with these items, basically. Yeah, these are the items they're going to have to try and force these mid-game fights. Can't really expect anyone else to get anything big up. At least not in the near future, and Blomberg is going to have to be involved if they want to take fights. They just need his damage at this point. He's sitting on maxed out souls, so he can at least do damage that way. The level 2 ultimate uh, gives him some good AoE as well if he can get in there. But uh, it's going to come down, I think, to String and being able to land his skills. They really need to do as much damage with him as possible, with his AoEs to try and take fights. Yeah, Force C, they actually rotate into the Roche Pit, but it did get spotted out. The flare from the Clockwork actually uh, noticed them going into the uh, pit, and here comes another flare just in case. A Force C, they continue going with this. A Rox is not going to let that happen, so they're going to try and fight this, most likely. Just need to find the right opening as we see everybody of 4FC going back. Of course, a Roche Pit would be the ultimate place to find the fight as a hookshot actually misses from Vanscore. So that will be their initiation gone. It looks like Yol will try to force them back towards the top lane by pushing in on the tier 3. Yeah, 4FC, they, I'm not really sure why that was what they decided to do, was try and do Roche and they don't actually do that much damage right now to try and take down Roshan quickly. Uh, oh, yeah, as we can see. My Niz armor. Uh, oh, the the presence of the Dark Lord? Yeah, that one. Yeah. Oh, right. Nec yeah, Necromancer is what gives him <laughs> Yeah, the, the other one. <laughs> yeah. So he does a lot of damage because of that, but he, the rest of their team really doesn't do that much physical damage for taking down, at least not quickly. And now it's kind of, they just put him down to half health for rocks to finish it up. and. Yeah, looks like they want to try and contest it though, somehow, but they're gonna be too late for the Roshan itself, so they'll have to fight up against an Aegis Gyrocopter. And 4FC, they're, they're waiting for the right moment. They can't fight it though, not yet. Strangby with the Shadow Blade looking forward, but he walks right past the ward. Impales there, Strangby's gonna get initiated on, and it looks like he's almost gonna be down before the fight starts. The rum in the Living Armor, not enough to save him this time. Dread turns on his BKB, looking for targets hit, can't really find them because everybody else of 4FC already flying and running as the two birds still drop the familiars that is and 4FC they, they back up Blomberg not gonna be backing off in time will go down to Yol's right click and the we see the tree also running for his life life nature's guys will hold him safe as the rocket will still realize where he is but the hookshot misses him and currently will be okay but that's a tier 2 tower down and it looks to be even more than that it looks to be a tier 3 yeah, we see... I don't know if you can see how well you can see my drawing on that. Sheffy was hanging out over here during the Roshan fight near the secret shop. Near the secret shop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, near the secret right, shop. There yes, is. I see it. I wish, I wish you could see it on the mini-map. It'd be so much easier. Yeah. Uh, so he was hanging out there. He got separated from his team, and that meant that they couldn't do anything. They just couldn't take the fight at that point. He was separated, and... Stringby was down before he even oh, got Oh, they're gonna fight go it again. now, though. They blink in, they overgrowth, the boat comes in, the torrent is there. Venomancer is already on the floor, but Shadow Demon on the other side. It's a one for one trade. Can they find more? Everybody really low on Rock Skiss, and BZZ struggles to find a way out, but the tower will help pick him up. Aegis gets burned by Dread. Nice timed torrent. Dread trying to run. Has got his BKB up once again and turns it on right in time, but never mind. Kunka with the splash. Three dead on the set of Rock Skiss, and they only gave a Shadow Demon. And although we do see a very low Venomancer, or Venomancer, what am I saying? Very low. Visage and also a very low 
Nature's Prophet as he also TPs himself out into safety. But that was the best fight that 4 of C could have hoped for. Everybody, everything landed. I mean, it could be a bit, bit better maybe with a, with a vacuum if you would have a Dark Seer. But looking really solid. The team fight potential is there. They did lose a melee Rex though. Yeah, that was a great fight. And that's the fight they wanted to take at the Roche Pit. Not yeah. after their melee Rex went down in their base. Exactly. They had the opportunity to get that fight. They, were, they had at least four of them sitting in the Roche Pit. They could have tried to torrent from any sort of place and set up the boat, the overgrowth blink, anything. Instead they just kind of got into a weird position. They tried to go for the big wraparound that took too long and Blomberg kind of got left behind. Now they're down a melee rank. And we're seeing Necrobook actually being picked up by BZZ just for that extra push power. It looks like the rocks do want to just close this out in the near future. Yeah, and of course with the Necrobook they will be able to also scout out all the Invis heroes and of course, not to forget the sentry boards that have been placed down by 4FC constantly. We do have a gem of truth set up on Krill E though, so that will help counter warning for 4FC and getting them some map control back as they smoked up and they are looking for a kill upon Yol. But Yol is already inside his own jungle and is hiding in the trees. Should be able to get himself out of there fairly safe. He also picks up a Necronomicon because that's the item that everybody wants to have. So. Looks like now that Rox has got the advantage, they just want to barrel it through and just want to take down those racks. Oh, well, those racks. Yeah, well, more racks and towers as well. All of the racks. All of the racks, not just <laughs> all of the one. buildings. I take all the buildings. Well, they're on the right path for it. It's 16 to 9, the kill score, even though. It's still, I mean, it's still only seven kills difference, you know, it's not really that much, but it is a very low kill game, well, very low, it is a low kill game, we are normally seeing maybe a bit more in, uh, in Western Dota, but with le lesser kills, le or less kills, means that the kills that do happen just mean more. Five people of 4FC here in the bottom lane, though, and they're looking to take down a tower. Are under attack. Bottom oh, they're gonna give their range tracks up for it by the looks of it. Radiant structures are fortified. Yeah, the range wreck's like kind of the least of their concerns at this point. That lane's gonna be pushing no matter what. If they lose the range wrecks, like, it sucks, but it's it's acceptable losses if they can get the tower. The problem is, it doesn't look like they're getting the tower. Nope. Be it Ruck's case, they're actually defending it with just three up against five. And four of C gets four us back. In the meantime, Yul's laying down some pressure on a tier three top soon. Their ranged racks indeed ended up still going down, so they don't get anything in return for losing their ranged racks. And that is that is a really major loss for them. Uh, even though it is only a ranged racks, I mean, you might see that as slightly less worthy. But it still it still means a lot. I mean, those ranged creeps are the ones that help push your lane out a bit, so... Yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty big loss if you don't get anything in return for it. Yeah, definitely. The average win answer plays is 110 play boards a game. Whoa. I can't tell if that's a lot or not that many. No. Um, really... Well, you can see how, think how much mana it actually is. Well, uh, 200 or 2,000 mana. And, and how much, like so, Necronomicon level three, and how much uh, cooldown time it requires. Like you have a five second cooldown per ward. So. Yeah. So like that's 550 if you seconds. Yeah, so like every, for 10 minutes you place it every cooldown, and then that's that many. I guess it's probably a lot since you're not like spamming it every time it's off cooldown. <laughs> oh, and careful. They're looking for a fight. From behind here comes the BZZ, by the way, but there's a gem, and they will find him. There's the lead sheet already. X marks the spot. They're gonna go on him, but this also makes, means that Rox comes in to try and save their carry. Disruption is gonna be there to try and prevent Dread from going in. We already have Nyx Assassin going down. This could be good for 4 FC. The boat comes in, the overgrowth is there. Dread though, with this BKB, he takes a lot of damage from Blumberg, who is still able to stand there. Rocks with the leech seed. One more hit. 36 HP, the bird chase him down, a Shadow Deep Fiend still goes down to Yule, and these birds in the tree, they want to get this helicopter, they do get him with the Blink Dagger of Krilly helping out, but that is still a 3-4-2 trade, it is not looking good for Rocks. they only have the tree alive together with the Kunkka, and they cannot pick up anyone anymore, even Solo with that very low HP, should be fine here for, uh, well, for quite a while, until he has all his HPs back, I would say. But not, well, in the end, not the fight they were gonna have, wanna, wanna have. I mean, they used everything they had on that Nyx Assassin, and of course BZ went down fairly fast, but after that, just Dread with his uh, BKB, shooting everything. 
Yeah, they, they're kind of having the issue right now where all these Necrobook mains are running around, and both Shadow Fiend and Kuka are doing a lot of AoE damage. So when they're killing the she uh, Necrobook minions, Stringby kind of is going to be killing himself if he ever hits them with Boat and Torrent, just trying to deal damage to the rest of the heroes. So it's kind of a... this Necrobook is making it very difficult for them to team fight out. Also, they give the True Sight reveal on the ranged one, which helps against the Shadow Blade. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the boat just came out too late there from String B. A couple, I think both supports were dead at that point, and they yeah. need to get that Kunk the rum on everyone if they want to survive in these fights. They're just so far behind. True. I guess they weren't really expecting to to have BZ coming in from the back end. And uh, by the time they realized that, or by the time the Kunka realized that, it was indeed, as you say, it was already too late as the boat has like a bit of a delay time, of course, I believe three seconds before it's in. By the way, Dread has got himself that butterfly, of course, that definitely helps him as well. He ended up sitting on just a Morbid Mask, didn't want to go for the Helm of the Dominator still. So kind of interesting, but that is just what you get from being this far ahead. He can do this, so why not? Why not indeed, as BZZ is walking past some sentry wards of 4 FC, so maybe Strangby wants to try and kill him off. Here comes the X mark the spot. Whereas the torrent, it is gonna be there. The Spike Carapus is gonna be there as well. But here comes Krilly, he blinked himself in and Yoli TP'd himself in with the pill from BZZ picking up the Kunka and now Krilly on the run. And should be staying alive, but that they were trying to hope for for easy pick up to stop Rock's kiss from going in and they lost their Kunka in return, which is a pretty big loss right now. As he did pick up that chrysalis. Yeah, and he's most of their team fight at the moment, so him being down is like, well, we can't really fight anything right now. But fortunately, it looks like rocks aren't actually trying to force the issue. Dread seems to be firing up some stacks with the dire ancients. He's already got a butterfly down, 1500 gold. What's on the career? Oh, he's gonna have oh. some of the dominator oh. as well, ah, momentarily. So. Well, I'm so guessing I'm they're up. just waiting for Roche. Yeah, that's what it seems like the uh, plan is at this point. They have about a minute remaining. I guess Gyrocopter's died the last couple fights, so who wants the ages just to be safe? But at this point, it's kind of hard to think Force are actually going to be able to take this. Sort of slipping out of reach with these Necro books coming up now. They both are at level 3 for BZZ and Yol. Yeah, and th this is a known thing. Necrobooks used to be uh, the thing to do. Teams would go five-man Necrobooks and they actually started limiting how many you were allowed to purchase on a team. <laughs> all in combination with that Lycan Howl, of course, if you could get it. And with all the auras that you can get with it. It was indeed pretty, pretty powerful. And of course, I mean, it's a gem up on both teams. We have got the gem up on Train Protector as well as up on Solo, so... Solo able to counter ward with that, meaning that the map control 4 of C should be even less soon, but they only have one ward up here anyway. It is the one ward on the high ground yeah. on the top lane, and right now rocks they don't really care about the top lane apart from Yul pushing in there, but they look to be wanting to, after Roche, just continue pushing on the bottom lane as Roche is back up again. So we're probably going to see them move there, but 4 of C, they want to contest it. They know that if they lose the Roshan, they will not get the game going for them, or they will not be able to keep themselves in the game rather so we see wards being placed upon wards let's see if they can stop it we really see rocks they are preparing for battle waiting for a hook finding it up on Krilly whereas the cogs no cogs there as the nature's guys is gonna keep Krilly safe even though he's standing right next to that sentry ward obviously <laughs> and Venomancer has a uh, van score blocked <laughs> up on top of the high ground by those wards ah nice he cannot go <laughs> Nobody can. Back to team. No, but nobody can go can go out either. Like they they can only kill a Vanscore, and they couldn't stop the Roshan from happening. Apart from if they jump themselves over, which is basically only possible for Krilly. As a jump over is actually done by BZZ. He gets Krilly. The cogs are there as well, but the overgrowth is there going to be any follow up? They cannot really lose Krilly. They need a living armor for the fight. Krilly has been completely out of mana. Here comes the boat. Doesn't really hit. Only provides the rum. As Krilly will still go down. Gem on the floor. Dread looking for a target, call down, hits upon boom speed, the slow is there, the damage is there as well with the double damage from the BZZ and the Impale finishes it off together with the old Sprout up on Iconoclast, he gets a hook as well and that is a very easy kill. Again, we're going the way of rocks. everybody of rocks looking good on HP, you wouldn't say that I actually have fought if you looked at their bars. And the GG is called 4C, they tap out, they hold on for a very long time considering 
the start was really not that good for them. But in the end, Roxkis just continued to dominate the game, continued to call the shots and end up winning their three points in Starlight of Season 6 for Day 16. Yeah, just, I think they got a little bit outdrafted here. The tree pick, it got countered early by all of the sort of packets of damage Roxkis could do very quickly. And there was just not a lot their strategy did at that point. Their aggressive trialing didn't work out well. They were hoping it would survive. In effect, with some help from the living armor, and that wasn't the case. Uh, of course, Blomberg, he got ganked so many times in the mid lane that Shadowfiend just. That was kind of the reason we don't see Shadowfiend picked up as much anymore. He doesn't have an escape, and he's pretty slow early on. So he's very, very vulnerable to those ganks at level 1 and the first 5, 6 levels. In the mid lane on Shadowfiend. Yeah, Venomancer getting 7 kills. <laughs> And of course, with the early game aggression coming off from him, helping out a lot there. And of course, uh, for Starlighter today, we have got six games in total. The only downside is, after this game, we have a one-hour break. So the next game is not going to be in ten minutes, but in one hour and ten minutes. We're going to see Virtus Pro in that game up against 4FC. See how 4FC does against that team. And of course, if you want to continue watching Dota right now, then you can follow Rox. They are playing a game in the defense up against Navi, which I'm sure that most people already knew. But now you can jump yourself over to that. As um, well, we'll have a, we'll have a short break, and before we continue on, I hope that you will come back after, of course, after you see Rox versus Navi. Uh, that would be very much appreciated because not only do we have Virtus Pro taking on 4FC, we'll also have. Empire taking on Alliance, we have Empire taking on IC Cup, and then we have two games with DD, both against Power Rangers and KP, and we'll see who is taking all the points today, as uh, with all these six games going on, a lot of points for grabs. Of course, with me here is Kanaz, you can follow him at twitter.com slash Dota, and of course also Kpoptosis, providing you with the stats at Kpoptosis on Twitter, which is of course without the hyphen this one. So. Uh, stay tuned or open a different tab for the defense and uh, yeah, come back with us in an hour and uh, we'll be waiting for you. So stick around. <laughs> 